we are so glad that you're here. Um, and if you happen to walk by a, a large a pile of bread on your way in, and you're a visitor, and you don't really know what's going on, um, uh, that's because that we are having our last uh, Waverly Food Week at the end of the year tomorrow. And uh, our team will be well represented. I believe we have 12 people at the back. Hunter, over 12 that have signed up. I know they're trying to get 50 people um, there tomorrow. Uh, the Williamson County and Murray County clubs uh, have all put a uh, band together to um, raise money. The team participated in that to uh, smoke pork shoulder, and they're going to have 500 pounds of pork pork. They're going to have frozen turkeys. And the bread out there is um, is to be taken to Waverly and distributed along with those two things. Um, so I uh, encourage you to, to uh, participate if you are able to spend the first half of the day tomorrow out in Waverly for the um, food distribution that would be time well spent. I'm, I'm looking for Patrick Wright. He has to be out here. Um, so uh, he is going to have, I believe, a session next week for the new members talk about the Little Harpeth River cleanup. So the Little Harpeth River cleanup is scheduled, I believe it's February 3rd, it's going from memory. Uh, February, early February, um, there is a makeup date scheduled the following weekend, but for new members that have not participated in the Little Harpeth River cleanup, I uh, see several of you here. Um, please come next week. Uh, Pat is going to have an information session, um, and then he will begin sign-ups so that people can get signed up to uh, to participate in the Little Harpeth River cleanup. Um, I'm going to get back to that in a moment, but I have one last question. Beth Dormy, uh, and Susie Lindsay, who represents our club, um, at the Rotary Foundation Dinner, which was part of the mid-year conference that was held um, here in uh, Cool Springs. Uh, so, as you can see, we've had uh, every Rotarian every year banner. So, congratulations to the club for achieving this designation. Let's give ourselves a round of applause. And um, we've also received the 100% Foundation Giving Club. So, congratulations. Uh, and then, lastly, we received the number two club in the district in per capita giving. And when I notified Charles Drummond that we were the number two club and, and we had pictures that we were posting the social media channel, Charles was like, we, we're going to celebrate being number two? And I was like, well, yeah, we, we are. It's a big deal. And there was a fix in because the district governor was from the Columbia Club. I think we got a out by the Columbia Club. There was, there was, there was something afoot. So be proud of yourselves. Um, congratulations for being the number two club in the district and for capital giving. Um, that was, I think, about as good as we could do considering the circumstances. So, congratulations. Um, now, I do see Pat. There he is. Do you want to come up here? Or do you want to eat? Yeah, I felt that too. Yeah, yeah. You like to make an announcement. I have informed people that you have an information session for the Little Hut that you're going to clean up next week. Yes. Um, for those of you that are new or people that particularly want to assist with cleaning up for 2024, I want to do a brief session next week to kind of talk about it. So we talk, we do talk about it, but if you're new, a lot of times it's important to assume. Um, so I just want to do that as well. I do need two things. Some help with media, uh, Pat, Jody, and Sherry to come up with that. If I do need somebody, we've got some contacts on the with one of the things that get the media throughout the area. Please let me know. Um, you know what I mean. And I need a contact with the girl scout. Anybody got the girl scout contact? Uh, I've got a name. I've not had a lot of success in getting information to them in the past couple of years. Great. Obviously, I'll need help with AR. Um, it is a week later this year, typically the last weekend of January. The library has a function, so we serve it there great um, every year, and they we can allow us to get new things. So it'll be the third of February. It's a makeup week. Um, everything else is kind of the same as we do 
videos that I can get new people there to help me get the masses when they show up. And of course, it's just a big job to deliver the stuff. It's a part of the delivery of the device and the track and the rest of the world. Anyway, thank you for that. I'll have some sign up next week. I do have some flyers. We have some Sunday in the region. I know it's a little early, but we look forward to it. We have some holidays. Patrick, nailed it. Safe right and everything. Um, enjoy your life. That's uh, you get to bring it up. Here you burned it. Um, so I have. Uh, I'm going to turn the hat button. I, I've actually got a hat button. I will let Steve Hammers, our president-elect, bring us the hat button. I'm for happy bucks. I'll be happy. An approval of this amount to his cousin Don Robinson having the first one. Happy birthday. I'm happy today with the basketball done. Do boiler maker. What he does, he waits to see what we've got at the very last second on Monday. So, two, I put in one for my good friend Don Robinson, who's uh, 95 today. Or 96, I think. Anyway, uh, well, just, yeah, that's right. I um, also want to just, you know, let everybody know that you can rest assured that we're safe and on wonderful day because the forces of darkness were defeated forces of evil, degradation, thrown aside by uh, the mighty Seminoles just this Saturday in the swamp. Hey, Rabbi, I hated Gators. <laughs> uh, so I had I put did put money in, Alan, um, but the, we actually received, so we finished our foundation drive. We're, we're done reporting out because everybody had contributed, but uh, we finished our foundation drive around $63,000, which was, which was incredible. Um, but it was a little short of our goal, but we did receive a $5,000 contribution as part of our foundation drive to get us just under $68,000. And so our foundation drive, Steve all foundation drive, will have exceeded its goal. So congratulations. Awesome. Putting in $5. Awesome, awesome. Anybody else in here? All right. I want to put a button in for Jennifer Ruan. Jennifer, can you stand up to take a bow? Jennifer has not only been in charge of the Interact program this year, but has revitalized the Brentwood Club and greatly supported Ravenwood. Or, uh, I'm sorry. At John Overton High School. Not only that, but she stepped in for me as a director of vocational service. So she's done double duty and has done a great job at all. So Jennifer, take it out. Nice job, Jennifer. Thanks, Jennifer. I had to put quarters in because I have no cash on me. Um, but I, this is for Clay because he's been to Waverly before. Almost every time you'll see his face down here, and he's amazing. It was such a help there. So thank you for coming out there all the time. Beth, we do take credit cards, but we need two forms of ID from you. All right. So, um, a month ago today, uh, Sarah and Betsy took me to the hospital. I had my surgery. The doctors got all the cancer out, which is amazing. 
it, it is my first day in grown-up clothes, so I'm working on that. But um, I, I do have a amazing uh, pump that runs off my body heat that puts uh, chemo directly into my liver just in case there's anything that got missed. But I'm feeling good, and I'm grateful for all the calls and the cards and the ice cream and everybody taking care of me. Thank you. That's awesome. I got to spend all day yesterday on the campus of the University of Alabama touring with my daughter and my sweet friend Eli Gold. Safety seat at Nick Saban's radio show last night. So I got to be there with Nick and Eli Gold. It was super fun, especially after the touchdown by Ben Rolls. I can't awesome. believe you did awesome. that. I thought we were friends. That's that's for Sue. But uh, I was uh, I did watch that Iron Bowl. And I, I didn't catch the last minute or so, but I wanted to congratulate the Auburn Tigers. <laughs> Whoa, man, that is cold blooded. Anybody else? Anybody else happy? All right, we're. <laughs> I don't. Devin said it's basketball season. Tell Laura to go dog. But that'll be really exciting. Amen. <laughs> All right, anybody else? That's it for Happy Bucks. Wow. Wow. Um, I was trying to forget about the game on Saturday. Um, but I thank you, Laura. Appreciate that. Um, I've been reminded uh, as I've been up here by Steve Pass, and thankfully, if you have made a pledge for the uh, drop for the foundation drive and you would like to make that payment by credit card both tom and steve pass and can accept credit card payments so please see them um and you can make that payment so i wanted to make sure that i've offered that public service announcement and with that i will invite uh bert bradford to introduce our speaker all right everybody today our speaker is tom Ad atkinson who has written a book a hundred things to do in Nashville before you die, and he will have some for you later. Uh, Tom is known as the Marco Polo member of the Society of American Travel Writers. He enjoys telling stories that entertain readers and inspire them to go explore. Early on, he was an assistant travel editor at Southern Living Magazine, and, and now he's a travel writer for the Knoxville Daily Sun and the Tennessee Travel travel columnist for Main Street, Nashville. He has followed stories from around the world and for publications throughout the U.S. He went to Hillsborough High School. He was a 1972 outstanding journalism graduate for the University of Tennessee, which he notes is getting longer and longer ago. Uh, just for jolly, she earned her master's degree from the University of Alabama, Birmingham. He learned the business side of tourism and hospitality through Opryland, later Gaylord Entertainment, where he was in public relations for 22 years. He was vice president of communications when he left the company in 2001 at Opryland Gaylord. He worked for the theme parks, hotels, radio stations, cable television, riverboats, music, publishing, and the entertainment venue. Uh, he did want me to state though, this is the third edition Get it because the fourth edition, due to Bidenomics, it will only have 97 things to do. So uh, let me let's welcome Tom Atkinson. Thank you, sir. I am delighted to be here. We are squared away. We're going to have some fun. There are there are prizes, but you nobody gets my chicken. I'm I'm taking the chicken. That's me on a camel in China. I put that up there just because it's the only picture like that I'm ever going to have in my life, and I like to brag on that. I like writing from places far away. I like writing about places at home. And that's that's the nature of the story. And so let's let's jump right in. That, by the way, is not the Narrows of the Harpeth. It is the newest national park in the United States in West Virginia, the New River. 
but I can't go backwards. I just skipped over one, but I said in, in my observations here, if, if there's a hundred things to do in Nashville before you die, there are three that are just absolute gems. I mean, you, you have to do it. Go to the Grand Ole Opry. And by the way, I'm going to fly through this. I'll finish before one o'clock, and if I don't, y'all can stand up and walk out. I won't, I won't be offended. I know the rotary way. Um, and we will have some books in the back if you want, but three things that you absolutely should do. The Opry is Nashville's special institution. Two years from now, it's going to be 100 years old, beaming out of that tower right there. It is cool. Go to the Parthenon. I had a pair of German visitors two weeks ago, two weeks ago and I told them we had a replica of the Parthenon, and they just were, oh, no. And I drove them by, and they said, that's weird. And I agree, but we like it. It's our Parthenon. And there's a good story behind it, and there's a there's a good art museum inside, and a very strange statue of Athena. Uh, if Alan requires in the, in the house, or you know it, I'm sorry, it's an odd looking statue. And you go to the Country Music Hall of Fame. Those three things, you'll lay the foundation for saying you started your Nashville quest. That explains the music that makes us famous around the world. And by the way, there's a, there are a couple of tips about going. If you are a member of the Nashville Metro Library, you can check out a pass got your ticket to the Hall of Fame. Also, if you buy a ticket, go in the morning. Enjoy yourself. If you get tired, leave. Go for lunch. Go for a beer. And come back because your ticket is good all day long. That, that's a, a key part of enjoying that fabulous institution. And while I'm thinking about it, it might be our chiropractor friend here, but Who's been here the least amount of time in Nashville? I think I heard six months for you. Okay. First prize of the day. Oh, 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 no. It, 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 it's a blank notebook from Spain. I just got back from Spain and you can take notes today. And a hey, consolation prize. Everybody needs a care of But acknowledge what brings national identity to the outside world. The Tennessee type, the national predator, national SC soccer. They carry our name everywhere. All of us ought to experience them at one time or another. Predators, by the way, I think are just great fun. You get to do employee evaluations while you're while you're having a beer, because you get to tell the referee exactly, exactly how what kind of a job he's going to do. Now, another thing that gains us recognition, whether you love Lower Broadway or hate it, you should experience it. It is national. It's gotten weird. Daytime, it, to me, it's a lot more fun than nighttime. I might get curious and go see the new Garth Brooks place once, but I like old older places, particularly like I like Roberts Western World. So, indeed, that's another thing. It's, it's us, and be able to tell visitors about it. Now, music is our calling card, so let's, let's dig deeper into some of the things that you ought to do while you're here, or while, while you're living in that, or indeed if, if you're a visitor. By the way, nobody can do this book in a day or two or a week. It's something you just check things off of it along the way. The Musicians Hall of Fame, in the lower level of the old municipal auditorium, is a stellar place. And lots of people just simply don't know about it. It honors the studio musicians from Nashville, Muscle Shoals, Memphis, Motown, and Los Angeles. You go through here, the music just covers you up, and your your memory synapses are just going all over the place. 
this is a fine attraction and it doesn't get as much attention as you might expect. Now, there's another place, Namam. Anybody been to Namam? Got one, two, three, four, a handful of them. It is the National Museum of African American Music. Fifth and Broadway, it is, a, it is a history museum. It is not a tribute museum, museum to artists. It starts with the arrival of the first slave ship in 1619 and shows how the black culture has influenced America straight through. It is a top-notch institution. Songwriters Hall of Fame. Have I seen their building? I got one or two nods. It's the Music City Center. This is tucked into a corner, ground level, and nobody's ever there. You can stand there and punch buttons and listen to music and read stories about the songwriters that made national famous and continue to make it famous. My two favorite items in the display part are a letter from Hank Williams to Fred Rose, his music publisher explaining why he didn't think his latest song was really all that good. It was the one called I'm So Long For My Good Cry. And the other one that I really like is the handwritten lyrics from a songwriter named Paul Kraft. Most people haven't heard of Paul Kraft, but he is the songwriter of lots and lots of things, but also drop, kick me Jesus through the goalposts of life. You find things like that. Now, songwriters, get close. Not physically, maybe, but get to know them. They are our special thing. And the Bluebird Cafe is famous for many, many reasons. But it's not the only place. There are songwriter nights all over. Patronize. Uh, First United Methodist Church, First Franklin, has, has a songwriter's night monthly. But Places like the Listening, the Commodore Grill, and the Vanderbilt Holiday Inn, all places has a very good sunlight. Right? The Maxwell House Hotel, uh, finally, listen to these artists, these poets, who are bringing these to us. Now, when people ask me, where's the one place I should go for music, and after I say you have to go to the Opry at some time or another, I steer people to Third and Lindsley see a group called the Time Jumpers. I hope a handful of you know the Time Jumpers. There's one, two or three or six. Great. Time Jumpers are studio musicians. Ten of them. You don't know them. You wouldn't know them if you bumped into them at Kroger. But they put the music behind the songs that we all like and have a And they get together for fun and play. Most Monday nights, they're at 3rd and Lindsley, nice nightclub, and the cover charge is 10 or $20, and the burgers are good, but these guys, the gals, have fun. The Nashville is a great festival city. It really is. You can, you can have lots and lots of fun here, and some of these things are distinctively ours. That's the point of the book. There, the book is about things that are ours. Nobody else can claim. You don't find this stuff in Des Moines or Jackson, Tennessee, or Jackson, Mississippi, or Washington, or anywhere else. And on the festival side, CMA Fest. Uh, I remember when it was fanfare, and we started it in the municipal auditorium. 5,000 people at the most in those early years. And then moved to the fairgrounds, and then leadership changed, and it grew, and it's a monster event. Many parts of it are free. So, indeed, you don't have to go to the big stadium shows, but be part of that CMA Fest at some point along the way. And watching the TV special at home is not the same and doesn't count. You can't check it off on the board. In Pan South is a festival for songwriters. 
every March. Venues all over the city. Buy one ticket, go to a bunch of shows. Live the Nashville experience. Another big multi-venue event is the Americana Fest. If you hear a song and you don't really know what category it fits in, it's Americana. But blues and folk and bluegrass and country and all manner of stuff. But I can't really. 700 performances through the course of a week. It's just ridiculous how much music there is. On another level, the Tennessee Arts and Crafts Fair at Centennial Park is just top notch. And you can check things, two things off the book because it's at the Parthenon. I challenge anybody to find me another tomato fest. It's bizarre, but it's Nashville. It's East Nashville, hotter than blazes in August, 50,000 people, people dressed up as tomatoes, bloody marriages in the street. It's wonderful. It is Nashville, and it's, it's, just, it's just a lot of fun. Now, part of the book is food, and there are things that I was just cowardly about. I'll tell you about that. But meat and three restaurants in Nashville and the in the area are distinctively ours. There are food historians who say that that term originated in Nashville. I, when I researched that and found that out, I was just really surprised and delighted that, it, that it's there. But there, there's just so much choice. The revived Ellison Play Soda Shop is a good meat and fruit. It really is. But I didn't say it was the best in town. I, and I, I don't want to get beaten up by somebody who believes that it's what's. Or that it's Wendell Smith's. Or Silver Sands. Or the Bell Music Story. Have a piece of meat and fruit. It's good. It really took me a surprise. And there's a new place out on um, Murfreesboro Road called McHenry's. They pop up. Um, it's not in the book, it's not in the right county, but Bishop's over here in Cool Springs is really pretty good. And the stuff that looks like sweet potato casserole is carrots. So be beware of that. I did not choose or say what I thought was the best barbecue in town or the best burger. There's just too much. Too much fun with that, you know, with 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 the burgers, you know, Gabby's and the pharmacy and Brown's Diner uh, with barbecue with Jacks or Edley's or Martin's. And just get out and explore and entice people to to test and, and explore natural, explore the corners of natural. You have a nominee for one or the other. I had heard where oh they, they got back in their building hot chop very good I had I had heard that they were going to do a special just for a weekend but I didn't think there was anything solid all right very good thank you very much now before we leave the burgers Pardon? Browns, Browns I spoke of, yes. The, 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 city's, the city's first beer permit. Is, is it Browns? Yes. Now, of all the burger joints, there's only one in Nashville that, that has gotten high marks from Bon Appetit. And it's strange. There was an item for the three best burger joints in the country. And of course, it's illogical. It makes no sense. But anybody been to Dino's? No. Oh, man. I, you and I need to get out and go. You and I need to get out and go. Dino's is on at 411 Gallatin Road. 
Um, it opens about 4 p.m. every day. It stays open till about 3 a.m. Uh, they do serve brunch on uh, Saturdays and Sundays. And why Bon Appetit said it was among, one of the best three in the country is an absolute mystery. So you, you just don't know. Now, who would take a shot at Nashville's oldest restaurant? What? No, Jimmy Kelly. Oh, no, no. Not Brown, not Brown. Oh, come on. Dirt, uh, it's gone, but it, it, it wouldn't qualify anyway. I would say. Who says that? Okay. It is. And this man gets a Louisiana lunch pack. Ins insulated. Rallo's on 4th Avenue, right outside of the arcade. Chili that you enjoy two or three times. <laughs> and they cut up spaghetti in it. It's just, it's Nashville. It opened in 1907. It's the longest continuously running restaurant in town. Now, we, we fed your stomach. We put stuff in your ears with the music. Let's, let's feed our souls just a little bit. And I'm watching the clock. Um, we have very good cultural claims, all, all silliness aside from earlier. The National Symphony is just excellent. There aren't many cities who can claim the number of Grammy Awards that the National Symphony has. And the Sturmerhorn Symphony Center is a knockout, absolute knockout. So if you haven't been there, it's one of those things that makes Nashville special. It's, it is wonderful. It's wonderful. And the symphony does some really peculiar and fun program. They, they mix some things together. They'll have the symphony with the beach boys or do a night of Pink Floyd music or um, you know, name your artist and they'll pair up. And so you, you don't have to know classical music a bit. To enjoy the natural symphony. Now, wrist art, wrist art museum. Benson Broadway, thereabouts. I grew up thinking that was the post office. I, su I suppose some of them did as well. It's a weird institution. They don't own anything. There is no permanent collection at the wrist art museum, and that's why. That's why you get to go back again and again. It's all temporary stuff. And it, it makes that institution special. By the way, as you're Christmas shopping, the retail space at the Frist is one of the cool places in town to find things, find distinctive gifts. It's really very, very good. Now, here's another art gallery. anybody here been to the Van Vecten? One, I am not surprised. I really am not. People know this institution around the world and Nashville and its environment do not appreciate or know it. It's on campus at this. It has an extraordinarily nice collection of its own including something that's just peculiar that nobody can explain very well. It's called the Stiglitz Collection. Artist Georgia O'Keeffe gave this 102 pieces. Cezanne, Renoir, Picasso, O'Keeffe herself. It's just there. Actually, it's there every other year because they trade out with crystal bridges and, and markets. So. But look at this. Even people in the room, one has ever been to the Van Beck. Two, maybe. So, indeed, that is specifically wow.
That's in Nashville. So we're still talking festivals. Southern Festival of Books every October. It's a great event. And by the way, I threw this up out of pure vanity. That's me with Cal Turner Jr. Cal bought one of my books. I didn't have, I had the change, actually. He had a torn and I had the change. He said, no, no, keep it. Keep it. I want you to tell people that you owe me money. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, in in the festival cultural realm still, Plaza Mariachi on Nolensville Road is the best use of an abandoned Kroger supermarket you could ever see in your life. 15, 20 stores, restaurants, uh, Hispanic rest, uh, radio station, free programs for the kids, salsa lessons on Tuesday night. What a blast. It's, it's really fun. Pardon? You bet. You bet. It's, it is, again, something that is special for Nashville, something that we can celebrate. In the history and culture category, still, or start starting it. Whether you like Andrew Jackson or loathe Andrew Jackson, the Hermitage is, is a place you can see. They tell a, an unvarnished story about one of America's most influential people. And the grounds are beautiful, and they have special events, and it's just a destination, and it's it's uh, it's not National Park Service; it's a private institution, and it's ours. It's it's here in the history side, the Ryman Auditorium, which I hope everybody in this room has been to at one point or another. Daytime, they have a tour that gives a great story, a great picture of a good chunk of Nashville's history. And it's worth the price of admission just to go take a history tour at the run. Fort Negro. I bet there are a bunch of people in I know there are a bunch of people in that who couldn't find Fort Negro if they had it. It's back It's It's notable landmark is it's, it's oh, oh, that's old, where the sounds used to play. Yes. But for us, this was a Union fort built in the Civil War. It was the largest inland fort in the Civil War. And it's ours to walk around and learn the history of it. And some of that history is unpleasant. 1,700 people built that fort. Six to 800 of them died. Almost half. 300 of them got paid. A lot of them were people who were impressed, as they pressed into service. They were freed slaves who got put to work by the Union Army and then never got paid. It's a, it's a grim story, but it's, it's part of Nashville's history. Another piece of Nashville's history. I had not been to the Jefferson Street Sound Museum myself and so I, until I started working on this book. It's a ramshackle house on Jefferson Street, but it captures the story of the, the black nightclub circuit that was in Nashville in the 20s, 30s, 40s, and into the 60s, it would have been until about 40. And this one neat, neat guy has taken it upon himself to save that history. It's not a fancy museum, but it tells a great national story. Closing in on, on the end. Go to the Tennessee Capitol at some point. There are tours every day. I'm, I would not go during the legislative session myself, but it's pretty deep good. And we should we should know it as Middle Tennessee. Uh, humorist Will Rogers had a great comment about the architecture. He said that we were such an agricultural state that we felt compelled to put a silo at the top of our Capitol building. 
And speaking of the architecture, this is also a crypt. The architect was buried there. And it was not because of the construction. It was by design. He's also the guy who designed uh, downtown Presbyterian Church, which is one of the beautiful churches in town. The last part of the book is about Shaka. And that was just a joke. And I said, man, I can't do this. But I, I came up with stuff. The National Arcade, which is just about to finish a facelift with new owners and keeping some of the stores and new stuff. It's a breezeway between 4th and 5th Avenues downtown. When it opened in 1902, it was modeled on a place in Milan, Italy. Nashville population was 125,000 people. 40,000 people came to the Grand Open to see that because it was such an problem. And it's still there 100 years later, more than 100 years. In the book with a separate entry for shopping, the peanut store is hanging on by its fingernails. Two wonderful sisters own the place. It's it's probably not 200 square feet. They ship their products worldwide. They are known, and they're ours. <clears throat> Marathon Village off of Charlotte Pike, within sight of the Capitol. This was an automobile manufacturing plant in the early 1900s, and it's now a multi-use retail and entertainment area. I say shopping for cookies is the warrants being in there, but why Christie cookies? If you've ever checked into a Double Tree hotel anywhere, you get a chocolate chip cookie. I get, I get a few nods for that. That's a Christie cookie. So Nashville's being carried around all over. The Goo Goo Shop down on 3rd is a worthwhile destination, but why Why would I put that there? Goo Goo's were the first combination candy bar ever. That's cool. And they go all, they go all the way back to 1912. And they have, they're, they're good merchandisers now. They, you can make your own Goo Goo concoction. You can make chocolate, you can uh, mix whiskey in with, with them. I mean, it's, they, they do a really good job. I think Friedman's Army Navy store on 21st Avenue deserves to be in anybody's shopping list. And you can go to Brown's right next door. Back on the music side, whether you play a stringed instrument or not, walk in over it, Brune guitars or Parker vintage guitars, both on 8th Avenue, and see some of the most beautiful merchandising you will ever see in your life. And then people ask me, what's the what's the best Nashville souvenir? And I will I will offer my suggestion. It's something from Hatch Show Print. Hatch was a print, it's a letterpress print shop that went into business in 1879. And they've been promoting entertainment shows ever since. My old company helped save Hatch at one point. It's now part of the Country Music Hall of Fame and it's a great operating active business, but getting a print from there this big or that big, they're not expensive, they're portable, they don't spoil, they're great for the ultimate Nashville souvenir. And Bert, is that the end of mine? Or can you even tell? Oh, where to get my book? Uh, I have some here today. Parnassus and Green Hills. Uh, Landmark used to be on there, but they ran out. I don't know that they reordered. And y'all could do me a favor by going to Landmark and asking them for the book and getting them to order some more. But they're scattered around. Um, my publisher is readypress.com. Um, does anybody here work for Amazon? Please tell me no. Don't buy my book from Amazon. I get almost nothing. When you buy from Amazon, a book from Amazon, the authors come out on the short end of the street. Find it somewhere else. 
and that's it. Uh, we're right on time, but Tom, thank you so much. Before you sit down, before you sit down, please, um, we present uh, each of our guests that come speak to us a gift. Um, it's a pen that you will uh, be able to look back on your time with us and remember our club by. And what we would ask for your first order of business with that new pen would be to sign this book that we read um, to elementary school students here in the Brentwood area. So. Um, Very good. We're do that back there. Do it back here. So please visit Tom in the back corner and get your book. Remember, get it here, not at Amazon. Uh, Tom, thank you so much for being here. I did not expect this. If I was running, if I run out, I'll buy it or you can get a lamp on it. Wonderful. Thank you, Tom. Welcome to our guests, Amanda, Jeff, uh, Donna, KP, David, Clay, Palmer, uh, and our members currently in, uh, or our proposed members, uh, Jay, Banks, and Steve, thank you for being here. Uh, we look forward to you joining us more permanently. Um, if you could, please help put away tables and chairs, but if you put away chairs, do not put them against the wall. We just have to bring them back out. So just stack them in stacks of eight, by your table, Michael Kaplan has a meeting with the scholarship committee after this. Very good. Thank you, Michael. Where is it? He's going to put it over there in that little. Um, all right. Wonderful. If there's no nothing else for the good of Rotary, then we are adjourned. Oh, oh, Larry Kane, Larry Kane, Larry Kane, Larry Kane. RSVP. RSVP. All right, we ring the bell now. Well, I, I saw it. Yeah. I'll, I'll come back and get this done.